How's it going? It's Vinny here from VD Engineering. This video will cover an acoustic simulation tutorial of a chevron nozzle. So if you don't know guys, a chevron is basically an extrusion cutout on a jet engine. If you look at the Boeing 787, it's well known for its engines which have the teeth on them at the back. Those teeth are actually the chevrons and it's used to reduce acoustic pressure and signature and to allow creation of a much more quieter jet engine. So this video will show you guys how you can actually compare a normal no nozzle versus a nozzle with chevrons and and actually demonstrate that a chevron does reduce acoustic pressure and makes for a much quieter engine. So let's jump right into ANSYS and I'll show you guys how you can do this. Okay so for the geometry I have made it in SOLIDWORKS but you can use any CAD software. This shows you the process of how I made it. Basically I just made my sketch, I did an extrusion then I use an extrusion cut feature for my shark teeth or the chevrons and lastly I pattern them around so here I'm just making my nozzle outline it, it's not like a typical jet engine I'm using a different design but the concepts stay the same here I'm just going to do a revolve so first I'm just adding some dimensions these dimensions can vary according to your design for your projects so just dimension your drawing um, try and get it to be accurate Basically here, the idea is to not create a very rough transition. You want to be like a very smooth transition between areas. So I'm adding a, a fillet to make sure that there are no sharp edges because that, that can cause a lot of turbulence in the flow and it can also cause a lot of acoustic problems. So I'm just dimensioning it some more, adding my areas and I'm just going to do a revolve. So when that's done, you can simply do it. Go to revolve feature and pretty much any CAD software will have this. So next I'm going to make my chevron geometry. Now this is very critical as your chevrons need to have a specific angle and length. But this can be according to you. For me I'm just using a simple design, a triangle. So basically just make a line across your sketch and create the chevron lines. Um, try and make it on the same plane so you don't need to define new planes and waste more time that way. So just mirror the feature and just you know simply create that triangle there on the middle when that's done you can do an extrusion cut so an extrude cut cuts your geometry up so in both directions as shown here so that's one chevron right and now you want to pattern it so just go on circular pattern and then select your geometry there and you can choose the number of chevrons you want now try and occupy the whole circle you don't want any parts of geometry left behind so just try and put as many as you can adobo too many because that can cause problems with the simulation so try and get the the, the vertices to match up if they, if they don't match up perfectly that's fine but just try and choose a geometry such that it allows you to match up the vertices so here i'm just playing around with it trying to find the right setting and that's it so that's my geometry and now let's do the simulation so we'll be using ANSYS Fluent for the simulation because it's very robust and easy to use. So have ANSYS open, drag in Fluent and then drag in your geometry there. I have many videos on using ANSYS so you can watch all those if you're a beginner at ANSYS. So when your geometry is imported you can use mesh and let's make our mesh. So our geometry is there and let's generate a mesh to see what it looks like. So it looks pretty decent but we can still improve it. Improving a mesh, you need to make it more finer, so change the settings here as shown. I have many videos on how to create a mesh in 2D, so I recommend you to watch those if you're unsure about meshing. And when you choose your setting, you can update the mesh to see what it looks like. It's going to take some time depending on your CPU and your graphics card. So this mesh is quite good, um, but we can also tweak it a little bit. So if you're happy with this mesh, for me, like, like I'm okay with it, so I'm just going to now create my name selection. So that's going to be our inlet as shown there because the airflow goes in, in that direction in X. Select your wall of your nozzle and let's name it to wall.
And lastly, you need to create your outlet. So now this will be tricky. You need to select all those faces because that's where the air comes out from, right? Um, you have your engine, but the air only comes out from that in outlet. So you need to select, select the entire face and not just like one area. So just control and click to select multiple faces. And name it your outlet. So that is our name selections and then we can check it one more time. So our mesh looks good and now we can proceed with the simulation. So use parallel processing and use double precision because that allows you to perform much faster simulations. Check your mesh and let's make it density based because the flow will be compressible and change your turbulence to K epsilon realizable, which is good for something like this because we have a large area. Set energy to on because we have changing temperature. And let's set our air as fluid. So ideal gas and let's change our viscosity to Sutherland because it is temperature dependent and allows for a more accurate simulation. Go into your boundary conditions and let's set our problem. So let's first set the operating pressure to zero because we'll be using gauge and not absolute. Change your inlet to pressure inlet and let's use 155 kPa and 600 Kelvin as your temperature and pr pressure respectively. So when that's done, we can change our outlet. So let's say that we are flying somewhere high in the air and the outside pressure is very low, but it's not zero. So let's make it about 7.5 kPa, which means that we are at a very high altitude above the earth. Okay, so when that's done, you can initialize your simulation and we can also check our reference values. So it looks pretty good so far. And let's see to change it to second order upwind. Let's initialize it from our inlet and click initialize. So check our model quickly. So check case it says no recommendations to make at this time and set your iterations and then hit run. So, so this the solution will take time depending on your CPU and GPU. So for me, I don't have a very fast CPU, so it did take a while. So just let it run and let it, you know, reach a very low value. When that's done, we can turn on acoustics. So go into acoustics and set broadband noise sources, change the power to 4E negative 10 for air and hit apply. And then go into your uh, results and set it to wall because we want the acoustic on the wall. Click nodes and now we can see our wall there. Acoustics and then acoustic power because that tells you how powerful the noise is and let's hit display. So we can see our noise signature there now. It looks pretty decent. So let's compare it to our old nozzle. I did an, an, another simulation with no chevrons and it gave a different result. So obviously at the tips, the noise is very high because that, that's where the flow comes out from. So it's going to be very noisy over there. The, the red indicates that we have maximum power at the tips. So this is why in jet engines, they are now using chevrons to reduce noise. If you look at the no chevron case, the, the, the noise is a lot more powerful. We have a lot more tip noise and that's a problem because that can create a very loud engine and that's something we don't want. So modern engines are using this, the chevron technology to reduce noise. So that is it for the video. Thank you for watching a very quick tutorial on ANSYS. I recommend you to watch my other videos if you're unsure about things. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.